What we gotta do? <laughs> <laughs> hey, long as it ain't no real crazy shit, I'm with it. You already know my motto. I'm with them about the money. Long as it's lined up in my morals, I'm cool. I'm with the motherfucking bread. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm fucking be talking about what they want and won't do. Yeah, I won't do a lot of stuff, but if it align with my morals, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm about bread. <laughs> I'm not trying to hit with nobody else talking about. I'm about money. As long as it line, like like I just said, as long as it lined up with my, my morals and shit like that, I'm cool with it. Well, I'm about bread. Ooh. We just went up two subscribers today. That's what's up. Hey, I had a couple topics, man. Okay, okay. But we can't talk about them till Jerry Day get here. Because I got I need everybody's opinion on these. Though. Man. That's what I get all the time. Whenever you? whenever you're not here or yeah. Jerry Day not here. Yeah. I don't want to talk about whatever it is. I almost don't even want to record. Uh, but we still got to put up. Yeah, we still, we still got to go. We still got to keep That's going. why I just like, let, like on stuff like this, let the conversation flow of like what we went through and it could probably bounce off a conversation from there. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I did have a little something, something like we, that we can answer now though. What we can talk about real quick. That's, that's what I think that's kind of a, it's like a positive and a negative about how we talk. Because if one person is missing, we almost don't even want to talk about whatever it is we want to talk about. Yeah. Because of the way the conversations go. Yeah, that's true. Because cause it always be a nice, different opinion from everybody always have a, even though one or two of us might agree, we still got a different type of angle of how we agree. Because I, I agree with you on, on giving my kids some water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm gonna give my kids some water. I ain't trying to hear this shit with you. Jerry Davis going. Like, I understand the premise of what he was saying, but I'm gonna give my kids some water, man. I'm not trying to hear that shit. Like, you'll, you'll get, like, a, you know, you know, a two seconds of drinking the water, you know what I mean? Just just to make sure you don't dehydrate. But. I'm not even saying that. I'm, I understand the premise of what he was talking about. He was talking yeah, about yeah, of, of we wanna just give things to kids and everything, and nobody ain't earned nothing yet. Yeah. <laughs> You ain't you ain't you ain't did nothing like 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 this new generation is. Every time I do one play or every time I do something good, it's a celebration. Yeah, it ain't no motherfucking play time right now. We got to get the work. We got to get the business, man. You feel me? So that's that's what he was. That's what the the, the premise of he was. What he was saying. Right, and I and I agree with that. Right, I agree with that because and he also said in a lot of places in the world in in eastern world even you know outside of you know some parts of the US but mainly outside of the US and on on the eastern yeah you know what i'm saying there water is a privilege for them yes it is a fact water is a privilege for them so he said what he said y'all some 15 place trophy giving dude <laughs> that's a fact that's a fact everybody got a trophy everybody's like you get participation, ain't no trash talking, ain't making nothing better. Like, the other day, with the, uh, I, I watched the uh, Colorado Oregon game. Oregon beat the brakes off Colorado. And I'm rolling with Deion Sanders in Colorado. I was Colorado. Gonna ask you about I'm that. I'm rolling with them, I'm still rolling with them. I'm still on the bandwagon, I'm not, ain't nothing changed, ain't shit changed. It's just a little hiccup in the whatever. But, people were sitting over there talking about, like Deion say, that's what's supposed to happen. They supposed to go, they supposed to do that. Cause when you get your ass beat like that, I guarantee you, everybody on that motherfucking team gonna remember that shit. How bad was it? I didn't it was bad, bad, bad. It was like 35 nothing, the third 42 to seven or six. It was bad. And when you do shit like that, when you get beat like that, you make sure it don't happen no more. You work harder, so that, that type of shit, it won't ever happen again. 35 to six. Yes, that, that was bad. It was real bad. So you still sticking to, well you said three years. No, I said two. Well, you changed it to two. No, I was, it's still two. Yeah. I'm not, what? All right. That ain't what it looked like Deion said. You better get me now. And it's the worst as we gonna ever look. We gonna never look this worse no more. I mean, it's bad. Right. Know. Yeah. I don't know. It, that's, it's just, just a, that's just crazy like, to hear that. Because I, I knew it was on the news. Yeah, yeah, they gotta be bad. They gotta beat the brakes, bro. And pe people... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was mad as hell in the break room. Somebody was celebrating or something like that. I was mad. You know that. Did you? I don't know. Is there a, a group chat was going crazy because I'm all yeah. They, they was on me. But was it? Is there a like a fantasy league for college teams? No, nah, it ain't no fantasy league for college teams. So that, that's only professional, full on prof professional sports. Yeah, professional sports. Hmm. 
Yeah, I didn't. You know, you know, I, my my knowledge about that is limited. So, uh, yeah, but it, it was still was still was pretty good though. So, I wanted to ask a question from before we get started. Okay, shoot. Sure. Do you think? Okay, no, no. no. I'm just playing. <laughs> Okay. How okay? Better question. Better way to phrase it. How far is too far when it comes to a woman expecting the the father of her children or child to do things for them? How far is too far, right? So I was thinking about something that I that I noticed, mm-hmm. and two people have a child together. And I think, and I've seen I've seen this on multiple different situations. I think because a, a lot of times because the woman has a child with the man, she still expects him to do certain things potentially around the house. Like what? <laughs> like fix certain things. Or maybe even some yard work. Okay. Or if they're I guess if they're handyman, you know. Or if they if they know about doing roofing and all that stuff, like stuff to fix around the house, fixing electricity type of things. Okay. I think. Do you think it's too far for her to still expect him to do those things, even though they're separated? Nah, I don't think it's too far. I don't. I, it's, it's it's it's. I always put stuff up into the individual. If 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 everything is copacetic, if everything is going according to plan, y'all still on good terms, I don't think nothing is far because your kids stay there. And you still want your kid to see how you treat their mother in a good light. So, and to a certain extent, until your boundaries or their boundaries are met, I don't think it's no, 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 I don't feel it's no far how far you go. I don't feel like mm-hmm. buying them a house, buying them a car, paying the bills in the house. Your kid is still there. So they're still the kid, the mother of your kid or the father of your kid. So I don't think nothing is too far. Mm. Because that's still the other individual. You still gotta make sure they're good. That's still their mother. If something bad happens to their mother, it affects the child too. Right. So I don't think nothing is too far. Up until your boundaries, your morals, your judgment, all that other stuff. If y'all still on good terms, I don't feel nothing is too far. That's very, very interesting. Jay Every Day in the chat, what's going on, good sir? Jay Every Day, man, what's going on, brother? I want to have some. I wish you was here, man, because Ma got some topics he want to talk about. We can't talk about it until you get back. Hey, man, it is what it is, man. <laughs> I'm tell you, man. I didn't want to talk about this until he was here. Oh, so, but you know, Jay Every Day going to throw in his. Yeah, he going to write a whole detailed grammar corrected <laughs> paragraph. <laughs> paragraph. And we're gonna read it just like you wrote it. So, I think, I think there are some lines. Okay, sure. So, I think ultimately true. I think it is. It is up to the individual. Mm-hmm. Me personally, I'm putting putting myself in that situation hypothetically. If if <laughs> the mother of my the mother of my child and I are separated. It sounds so bad. Like I don't. I, I, I pray to God that never happens to me. But if the mother of my child needs certain things done around the house, and I'm capable of doing that, mm-hmm. I think I would have to put a limit on it. Okay. Because it 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 just cross over into the the. It crosses over into manipulation for me, using the fact that we have a child together to to get certain things done for you. Because I'm thinking, okay, I know uh, Joe Coy, mm-hmm. Joe Coy, right? He said oh, this one you got this for. Okay, okay, okay. No, I just I just thought about that this okay, morning. Okay, okay, but okay, okay. the connection just now, I thought about it like, right. right now. Joe Coy said that on the Breakfast Club that he pays for his the child of his mother the house that the child of his mother and her boyfriend or husband lives in. Because they have a child together, I, I believe. Okay. I might have to, I'm gonna have to insert that clip, but. Okay. 
<laughs> so you guys don't have a great relationship, huh? <laughs> you guys don't have a great relationship. Oh, we're the best of friends, man. We are though. Me and the mom are, yeah, man. And I don't mama. understand. We are. The she mom. got a boyfriend that that you know, that lives at the house and I pay for it. Yo, it's it's <laughs> and it's dope though. I love him. Nah, and, and, I wouldn't like that. I remember you saying it too. I heard him say that too. Yeah. That's why I thought you got this from. So is that is that too well, obviously it's not too far for Joe Coy. I guess because he has the money for it, of course. But where do you draw the line? Because there has to be a line. There has to be a, at least a, a general consensus that can be that that people can agree to. Like I think for anybody buying a house is too much. If you got it, it's not too much. It's only too much in the ramifications of your your thing, what you in now. Some people might say, "Oh, buying that bitch a bag of chips is too much." I don't like her. I wish, but it's like, how could you have sit down and have a kid with somebody that you really don't like? Like you don't want their well being to begin because they got you got a kid with that person though. I think. Okay, that's true, but my responsibility is to the child, and, right? And that child will benefit from that house that you're buying their mother, or that car that you gave their mother, or. You being there when she has some type of surgery to give her comfort and all that stuff. All these things will benefit the child in the own way because that is the person that's teaching your child. That's the person who got to give your child direction. That's what, we feel, that's what we fail to realize as men. The person that you're having sex with and that you're going to have a kid with is the person and the morals and stuff is going to be the person that's teaching your kid. That's the kid. That's the direction your kid going nine times out of ten go towards. Is the mother? The mother is the one nurturing, teaching all this stuff. That's that's what they're going after. I think that's one major issue because that's you're also too. you're also thinking about the fact that what did you every day say he said you, you might, might as well, well take, take the child. Mind. Thank you. He I, said you might as well take, take the child, child with you. So and I, I understand that. That's that's a fe- that's another feasible. I agree with that too. You might as well. But I'm just saying. To, to the extent of anybody who's taking a, thinking about doing something with the baby, I mean, the mother of their child, like doing anything, it's to wherever you like, that's the way you feel. It's, it's going to be each individual going to have each, three, every, all different types of answers mm-hmm. with this when it comes to this. Right. But I just say there's no ramifications, there's no limits to where you can go. Mm. If you. You think so? Yeah. So so you don't think there is a line? I don't think there's no ramifications of how far you can go. Because that's still a mother of your child. It doesn't matter. Now, if it's if it's causing problems outside of that relationship, if it's causing problems with your new girl, your new wife, you, okay, that's you gotta set boundaries now of how much I can do and how much I can't do. Why? But I don't think it's no ramifications of how far as an individual you want to go. I don't think it's no ramifications. I think I think that's manipulation. That's who? I think that's manipulation. What's manipulation? I think she's weaponizing the child to get certain to get. I didn't say things. she asked and she made you. She's like, oh, okay. And the ramifications if she's like dangling the child in front of you, trying to make you do these things. Yeah, that's no. what I mean. That's that's okay. What I mean. No, then no, no. I'm not. No, we would not be in hell hostage. We are you. We United States. We do not <laughs> negotiate with terrorists. We do not negotiate with terrorists. No, we're gonna go to court. And I'm now I'm on the thing with you every day. Child coming with me now. Right. And, and we do not negotiate with terrorists. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking about if y'all was on good terms, there's no negotiation, y'all real cool, y'all decent still. Yeah. yeah. She don't care if you got anybody else, you don't care. If she got somebody I'm talking about good standards. I'm not talking about if she's dangling and chill and no, nah, she's no, nah, she's a terrorist. Nah, she's yeah, because that's what that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking more often than okay, I said I I originally asked the question, where do you draw the line? Okay. But I'm saying I was coming from the standpoint of the amount of manipulation we see when it comes to custody of children, taking okay. care of children. It's like the lines keep getting pushed back on what is what what a man is supposed to do for his child. And it's and it's crossing over into taking care of the mother as well as the child. As a, like okay, if I'm if I'm doing this, what is she doing with her money? Because I'm probably chances are I'm definitely financially supporting my child in whatever way I, I possibly can. And now I'm dedicating extra time to take care of your house. 
what are you doing with your money for your house? Okay. Now now we now we talking. See, now we got some direction of what we're talking about. Okay. I'm with you on that. I'm with you. You're right. If I'm sitting up here doing all this and I'm taking care of you and all that stuff, what are you doing with your money? Giving it to other men? Giving it to other going Giving on it doing, trips. It, you gotta have your priorities in order. Now see, it's and that's and that's even less what I see, right? In terms of having priorities in order. Okay. Like you will ask me to and this is of course hypothetical, I don't have any children. But this is hypothetically, you would ask me to do some yard work for you okay. as the father of your child okay. because my child lives with you, but then you have another man in your life. Oh, no, 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 no. I already told I, I got that on two, too. If, if, if you got a man in there and you asking me to come cut some grass, <laughs> come take some garbage, <laughs> tell him he got to go because you my girlfriend, too, again. It ain't no, nah, this not work like that. That's what you got a man for, man. I'm not, nah, nah. You had those privileges when you had me. You don't get, you don't get to keep those same privileges. Yes, yeah, so, so and, and that's what I'm, that's what I'm really getting at, right? Jerry, they said, paying support and buying her a house. No, no sir. sir. I'm with you. That, you right. I didn't know he was talking about it like this. I'm thinking y'all was on good terms and y'all cool as hell. I right. ain't knew he was negotiating with the terrorists. We, we the United States. That's the name of the spot. We do not negotiate with terrorists. And that's what if again, like you said, if 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 we're cool, then okay, cool. You can you can ask me if I can help with something, right? Okay. You can ask me if I can help with something. That's not a problem. But if every time I turn around, every time we have a conversation about something, mm-hmm. you say, "Can you come cut this grass for your child?" or to some degree. Okay. So what I get out of it. You want to keep this between us? <laughs> what I get out of it? <laughs> hey, where are you at now? I'm going to put on this hard hat. If I'm putting on a hard hat, I'm coming to work everything out over there. I'm cleaning pipes and all. <laughs> what I get up out of it? Huh? That's what I'm, and that, true, and that's another, that's another question, right? What, what am I getting up out of it? That's another question. Is I'm uncovering some pipes too while I'm over there? There's some shit backed up over there I need to come clean up. <laughs> There's some shit I need to uncall. Huh? <laughs> What's going on? What up? Oh, man. Welcome to another episode of the No Key Podcast. It's your man, Spaces. This your boy, Maul, man. Jay, every day in the chat, he couldn't be with us today, man. He had to take a quick flight back to his home, his hometown, in his home country. Dubai, he had to go on a private jet to go fly to Dubai real quick. But he's he's on the jet while he's um he's, he's in the chat, yeah, man. yeah. He's on his he's on his way back right now because he had left like Friday, so he's on his way back right now. He got to get back to work and stuff. And it's so, a super long flight, so yeah, he had to he had he, to he had to stay over there. Yeah. Hey, watch and watch dumbass people tomorrow. Like, Damn, you went to Dubai for real? <laughs> I was about to keep going. Safe flight, Jay, every day, man. Yeah, uh, safe flight home, safe travels, B. I, I, we didn't talk about what kind of seats you got. Uh, no, I, he got I his own they, private jet. I know that they they have you, some some seats where you uh, set up where you can lay he down. He like being with common folks. He like his privacy. He is like that. Uh-huh. He is like that. I like, think we all like that to a certain extent. Though. I'm I'm inclusive. I'm cool with being alone. Jerry Day said salute. Jerry Day said, "Ma, that you know they deport nations." <laughs> I was born in America, boy. <laughs> hey, we gonna put deported. Fuck that. The name of this episode, deported. <laughs> Cultivate your roots. What's up? What's up, man? Thanks for coming back. Oh, long, man. Oh, man. What's been up with you, man? What's been up? Uh, nothing, man. We just been chilling, man. Just working, you know. Trying to get everything, you know. Back to like it should be, you know. You know, doing our thing, man. Getting, getting shit ready. Getting shit ready for this motherfucking recession that's coming. I hope you it's like your chips. It's coming. It's like kind of already here. But they ain't going to really officially probably see it until next year. But it's coming. Do you think inflation is the new recession? Inflation is the new recession. Inflation is the new recession. Because, you know, we had recession is when the stuff just crashes. Yeah. Right? 
That's a good ass question. Is inflation a good new recession? Is inflation the new recession? Pricing people out, putting, helping people under, well, by default, helping people understand where they stand financially by raising the prices of the things that they want to pay for. They show telling, boy. They show telling that to me because, boy, I get priced out of some shit on. Like that girl talking about, man, this stuff getting too hot. Nah, it's just getting too hot for me. I just can't afford right, it. Right, right. <laughs> I'm one of them. I'll stop fucking with some shit, boy. Yeah. And then it'd be get best for my motherfucking, you know, it'd be best for my own um, mental. And my, 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 it, it makes me, it forced me to be accountable for some shit I should have been already accountable for. And I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. So I'm absolutely. cool with that. Cause I, I, don't, I don't have no problem with that at all. We at got a legend home. in the chat. Legend in the chat. Oh, uh. Sister, oh no, that's uh, uh, Natasha. Natasha. What's going on, what's Natasha? Up, How you doing up, today? Um, I, I think you're absolutely right when you say, when you say um, it's it's a price, <laughs> what, I forget what you just said. I, they I price you out. They price you out of stuff. It's yeah, you, and they make you hold, it holds you accountable yeah, 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 for yeah, yeah, things yeah, yeah. that you should be already held accountable for. Yeah, I think it, it definitely holds you accountable. The worst thing, though, I think, is people still, people find a way to make stuff happen for the things that they want to make happen. But that, and, and that's the key thing where I always say, I know you never heard me say this plenty of times. Mm-hmm. People always ask me, like, man, you got so much of this, you got so much of that. It's no, it's just that you can't do, I don't, I'm not a rich dude. I, I'm not just well off with money. Right. But I allocate my funds to how it should be allocated. I know that if we go out this weekend with the fellas and we smoking cigars and shit, mm-hmm. okay, I can't do nothing the weekend or the weekend after that. It's like limited shit. You can't do this shit every weekend. Right, right, right. So that's the things you need to, like, Adjust yourself, budget yourself for doing this and doing that. Yeah. We're going to do something a couple weekends from now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that means, hey, a lot of these weekends in September, we can't go. We can't do that. Because <laughs> we're going to, because I want to do that thing. And I don't want to be sitting up here pulling money from this or pulling money from that. Well, no, I, I need to save them a couple hours on the weekends and throw my ass home. It's, it's, it sounds so crazy when you say a couple dollars. <laughs> Yeah, it's a couple dollars. Right, and that's that's one thing that they that uh, Rami Safety teach you, and uh, I will teach you to be rich. Yeah. He he said like he the in the program the, the way that he explains everything is not a, a most like I will teach you to how to I'll teach you to be rich type books. Yeah. We'll say cut this out, cut this out, cut this out, cut this out, cut this out. Yeah. No, he says, like, basically what you, well, one of the things he says, what you just said, like, okay, maybe we need to figure out how we don't have to do it as much. And that's a fact. You have people that every time, like, you think we don't wear Jordans, you think we don't buy all expensive things, but I don't have to have every pair of Jordans. I don't have to have, but and there's and it's certain things that's just going to price you out anyway, because, like, even though I don't like them, I wouldn't buy them anyway. Me and Jerry every day were shoe shopping for a special event I had. And we just went to all stores. And we were looking at Balenciagas. We was looking at all type of fancy shoes. We picked up a pair of Balenciagas that was 1500 I'm not paying that for no Balenciagas. I don't even like Balenciagas like that, but I'm trying to see how the hell is all these people paying for that? That's your rent. That's either your rent or that's your mortgage. And them niggas do not have mortgages. They got rent. That's... I was I'm surprised in the fact that you're saying you found a a, a nice pair of Balenciagas because I all no, no 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 I didn't say they were nice. Oh, I said okay. You just, said you picked them up. So yeah, I, I picked them up because we were looking at we were looking at shoes. Yeah. So I really wanted to see how much they cost. It yeah. was fifteen hundred dollars. I wasn't buying them big ass boats. <laughs> it's obvious to say even Warren Buffett has a budget. Thank you, thank you. She said, "May all of our." Income sources increase in 2024 and beyond. Oh, shit. Sure. So, as to enjoy more of what we love. I, I've i heard on multiple occasions, though, that there is a but, I mean, a, a, a uh, recession 
on the horizon, like in the very, very near future, like yeah, within 20, the next twenty twenty four. Yeah, within the next year. Yeah, that's the twenty 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 four. So, to all my people who's in the stocks, <laughs> don't buy none right now, unless it's like bottoming out right now. But just throw that money in that stock account and let it just sit there. As soon as this shit like go, like motherfucker chop a Wall Street say and end up up. We finna triple high net worth right now. That's what all the poor mm. people, that's what all the rich people do. In hard times and 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 in shit, when there's trouble in the waters, rich people get 10 times richer because they've been stacking their chips and they go and start loading the boat on all the shit that they wanted to buy and invest in. Cause shit bottom out and people just trying to hurry up and get cash yeah. and they got cash on hand so they start buying shit and then triples their net worth. Right, right, right. Do you still use TD Ameritrade? TD Ameritrade is no longer no more. It's right. switched to Schwab. Schwab, right. Yes. So do you use them? To the I, I don't know. I've, I've, since they switched to Schwab. They are Schwab. They are, okay. They are Schwab. So. They, everything, everybody is going to be switching to Schwab who's with TD Ameritrade. Because I didn't know before I got my account that Schwab had bought, I think, bought TD Ameritrade. Okay. And they've been going back and forth for years to see who's going to take which. Yeah. And they've been seeing how they're going to do the systems and how they're going to merge them together. And I guess they finally figured it out, and then now they're making everybody merge together. I've been getting emails about it, about, like, uh, TD Ameritrade is switching to Schwab and all mm-hmm. that. And they were telling me to log into my TD Ameritrade account yeah. so I can do the switch or whatever it is. Yeah, set up your password. So when they when they automatically, because it's going to be a weekend, because that's what they did to me. They started on a Friday. So when the market closed on Friday, after you log out, after, they, after the market closed, you're going to be locked out of your account. They're going to switch everything over the weekend. So when you come back Monday and a Monday the market open, you're going to be logging into a swap account. Mm-hmm. They're going to make you so they tell you to hit the ground running. So they want you, before this happens, to set up you your passwords and all that, your new passwords, your new login information. As soon as you come, you can just go log right into Charles Schwab with that new password and stuff that they told you to set up, and you'll see all your accounts. You can just keep on moving like it wasn't going to happen. I'm having difficulty with that. but I, I, it's Why like, you having difficulty? I don't know. What you mean? I don't know. I, I, I don't put forth the, uh, necessary, the, the time necessary to figuring it out. It's like once I try to log in, I give it like two minutes. Oh, you tripping. My money, though. I'm going right. to sit there all night. I don't know what the fuck you talking about. You tripping. I mean, I, I, <laughs> you tripping hard. I'm working on it. Yeah, all right. You, all right. Yeah, I, I'm on vacation this week. So yeah, You should have so. been doing that while you went on vacation. That's where the money is. <laughs> I got a nice little pretty turkey change. And, uh, you got me fucked up, and I got two accounts. So I'm, I guarantee I'm going to figure this out. Like, I'll, I'll be late for work fucking with that shit. Like, you know, and my money over there. I'm not trying to hear that shit. It's good to hear you start talking about stocks and stuff again. I know. I'm glad I am mean, starting talking. I ain't really been on it a couple nights. Cause I used to come home every night and just look at something stock-wise. Read something stock-wise. Read a paragraph. Read some analytics. Look at some charts. I look at something stock-wise every night. That's how I got to know. And I'm still not an expert right now. I still got a lot to learn. But I, I know as much as I know. So when people start talking that bullshit, like this dude was at work was talking about, Oh, options is the way to go. Trading stops is the way to go. And I'm like, no, it's not, bro. Like, you sitting up here giving out false information. Because he was talking about, he was looking at a dude online. And he said that he made like 20 bands, right? So I was telling him, and Natasha probably know this too. I was asking him, how much did he lose to get that 20 bands though? Mm. Motherfuckers don't tell you about all the negative shit that come with it. They just tell you about the 20 bands that he made. So, to, for him to make that 20 bands, he had to fuck up on a lot of options that he got wrong to get that 20 bands. Mm-hmm. And he wasn't saying that in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the thing. And other people can other people can hear you say this, and all they hear is, made 20,000, so they want to go try it too. Right. And it's like, no, it don't work like that, bro. That's not like how that go. And for you to be trading options, and I look at people who know about that shit. They say they've been in the stock market for 10, 20, 15 years. And they still they can't get a grasp on that shit like that. Like that. Yeah. They made a couple dollars, but it's not like clicking to them like it should be. Right. Like regular stocks. So in um, in the Bag Chasers Discord, yeah. there's a, a, a particular guy, Mr. Robinson and uh, Razik, these two guys. Uh-huh. Um, they talk... I'm still I'm still a fish out of water. Okay. I'm way like I I list they have 
conversations when they they talk about what's going on. Okay. And they talk about. I'm I'm probably gonna get butchered, but they talk about like day trading, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. yeah. Like a full on conversation about it, and they say that they're making bread from it, like because they they do like hard research on the companies. And, and, and that's the thing. They and it probably took how long it probably they probably been doing that shit so they can even get the couple dollars that they are getting. Like we, that's what we need to tell people. It is a risk reward and it's, it comes with stocks too. But most most of the richest people in the world have sixty to seventy percent of their wealth in stocks. Mm. Mm-hmm. And you can go Google that and research that. Natasha said, same goes for stocks, but the average investor can lose a lot with options. That's a fact, Natasha. That's a straight fact. It, it seems like okay. If I, correct me if I'm wrong, because you know more than me, it seems like really just like a f- really okay. So with, with actual stocks, with the the ones that have stock tickers and all that, right? Mm-hmm. That is something you can put your money in, and then you can that can money can potentially grow. <laughs> you read the Tasha comment? Yeah, I was trying to. Go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Natasha said you can you can win though. You have to get very comfortable with charting like Mr. Robinson and Razi. But that's the thing though. He was but the way he was putting it is like, oh, it just happened. No, it's a lot going into it. Right, and that's what and that's what I hear with options and trading stuff. It's like it's really, a, it's yes. really like, it's really the best way I can phrase it is a is a gamble. It's really a it guessing is. game. Yes. A hardcore guessing yes. game. Because he was trying he was just pissing me off because he was talking about some oh Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett trades, so I'm like, bro, that's not where most of his money goes. He might do that shit to pass by some time, but that's not where most of Warren... I say, so if Warren Buffett do that, what's in Warren Buffett portfolio? Let's see what you really do. My fuck is like, no, oh, 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 no, but you said Warren Buffett doing it. If you really in this shit, you know some of the hardcore stocks was in Warren Buffett portfolio. Right, right, right. Man. But yeah, they have those conversations. They say that, you know, they... They... they Profess it to be an, a, an option as long as you are educated about what it is that you're doing. Uh, like truly educated, learn about the company, learn certain all different kinds of methods and learning how to read. Look, charting, that's the one that they talk about the most. Yeah, but you, the, the charts of the companies that you're Yeah, you gotta read, go back them years and see when they was dipping, when they was falling. If it's if it's if it's going up and to the right, that means it's good. If it's going down and to the right, that means, no, nah, that shit been doing that shit for, oh, yeah. That shit been doing that for a long time. You need to look at some more research and see why is it been going down for so long. And that's probably not a good stock you should be even researching. Leave that shit probably alone. Mm. But see, that's like little tickers that when you start looking at this shit, that's shit that you pick up on. Because the more you start doing something, that's that 10,000 10, 10, hour rule. Yeah. It just yeah. comes natural to you. It's just like, like a second language. Right, right, right. That's what they... I, I've heard a lot of people say talk about the 10,000 hours of work or 10,000 hours of of effort. Mm-hmm. And that's actually... That's actually crazy if you really think about it. Like mm-hmm. when you think of 10,000 hours, like how, how many hours in a week do you have to... Put towards whatever it is that you're trying to do, whatever it is you're studying, whatever it is you're trying to learn. But like how many hours a week is that? I mean, it varies from person to person. Every, everybody's lives are different. Everything that they dedicate time to, but but everything comes with a sacrifice. Like if you want to be like you say it is, and you want to be like that in that profession, you have to do that. How many hours a day you think do basketball players shoot basketballs and train? How many hours a day do you think that football players do that and do training? So how many hours a day do you think truck drivers are always driving to get real good at this? So how, how many hours do you think they're doing that to do that? Countless. I don't, I, I don't so know. So when you, when you want to be a, prof- a plumber, electrician, they, they all do repetition. They all been doing this stuff a long time. That's what it takes. It's sacrifice. Do you think I don't even I don't even feel the need to ask ask this question. What's up? <clears throat> okay. Did you hear about or I'm sure you, you, you watch Earn Your Leisure, so you heard about Diddy and him being on the Earn Your Leisure pod. You heard about that? Yeah, he was on that a few times. Yeah, Did you watch well, it was something recent, like it was like a I ain't a really pen. watched they I have not really watched a pod in I don't know how long, to be honest with you. Because so, it's like I'm getting to the point where when people start really going commercial, commercial, I fall back from yeah. that. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it's, it's no knock to them because I understand, like, bro, I ain't even going to lie to you. When we go commercial, y'all probably going to start fucking with us too. I ain't going to lie. Right. But we going if they bring that <laughs> <laughs> We going if they bring that motherfucking money. You already know my motto. They bring that motherfucking money. But to a lot of these pods, when they start really going commercial, the same thing with 85 South. And I still I still am subscribed to them, but I just don't watch the content like I used to. Right. I might watch it every now and then. I don't watch it faithfully, like, waiting on it to drop and all that stuff. I don't do that. But when stuff starts really going commercial and all that stuff, I fall back from it a lot. Another one, uh, a Million Dollar Perfect Game. I love them them two guys to death. They, they killing it. But I just do not watch the interviews and all that stuff because it's not the same to me. Because you're interviewing the same people everybody else is interviewing. And y'all talking about the same things and asking the same questions. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the reason why I named this episode 200 M's. Okay. Right? Hold on a second. Pull it back up. Because you know, with the uh, the 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 immigration that's coming on in, into Chicago and New yeah. York, somebody's paying for them to be here. So fuck, we got right? that right? Oh shoot, I should have pulled it up over here. Oh, well, I was just from the point of your watch, but you ain't got one on today. I, I was. Well, you ain't got to say it out loud, man. You ain't got to say it out loud. <laughs> the people in the clouds don't need to know, man. Hey, bro, I be on people's ass. I want them to be on my ass, too. All grown men should have on the watch. I'm not trying to hear what y'all are talking about or what other people say. If you're a grown man, you should have on a watch. Apple, Timex, G-Shock, whatever. You should have something that you can tell time on besides your phone. And I actually, I was going to put on my watch because I have a watch in my car. Okay. I, I was gonna, oh, just, I was yeah. gonna put it on, uh-huh. but I forgot to put it on. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh so. shit! Oh, don't what? say it out loud. What don't the fuck? It, don't say it out loud. Yeah, hold on. <laughs> oh, they can see it on the thing when we you do that. Yes, sir. No, bam. Oops. So. Yeah, man. There we go. You see? Oh, that's crazy. But no, that you see that number? Yeah. Yeah, man. According to officials, this is NBC Chicago. This is just just a little snippet. This was written August thirty first, twenty twenty three. Granted, this is the first thing that came up. I've seen different numbers regarding this. Uh huh. The, the first number that I saw was 200 million. But according to officials, Illinois and the city of Chicago has spent 350 million on, on the migrant crisis. The federal government provided 38 million in reimbursements. So when it comes to. Oh, shit, know what you looking at? Stop it, man. Stop oh, it. Shit. Stop it. He just started looking at white Stop women, it. started looking at other looks like women. Now you looking at Latinos now, huh? You used to be white women. Now you looking at Latinos. We're going to get you to the dark side with the sisters. Don't worry about it, ladies. We're going to get them now. We're going to get them to the Stop sisters. Stop it. Again. He used to fuck with white women. But he started fucking with me and Jay Jay every day. Now he's the Latino. He's coming darker and darker. We're going to get him to the darker women in a minute, though. He's going to come over to the black side in a minute. Don't worry about it. We're going to get him straight, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> You, get straight. You, just gave some, you just gave somebody a clip, man. I know. You just gave so somebody a clip. They're gonna be like, they're gonna be like, spaces doesn't date doesn't like black women. I remember I told people that. I was outside of that thing. And they looked at him and they had a steak face. I promise you, I say that about a bunch of black women too, but when I tell you they got on his ass, he was like, he lying, he lying. I'm like, no, I'm not. That nigga don't like black women. <laughs> Let me pull up this thing before it. Hold up. See? God dang it. Okay, here we go. Mm-hmm. So, as a number of migrants in Chicago, hold on.
Natasha said it would be in, <clears throat> excuse me, it would be interesting to know where migrants are not going. It seems they're preferring urban areas. So fight Natasha too. We're, we're, we're getting there, Natasha. We're getting there, right? So, as a number of migrants in Chicago sleeping at the police stations and airports, airports continues to balloon, the city has continued to struggle with finding safe, sanitary housing for them to stay. First of all, mm-hmm. it sounds like this was a not even a half baked plan, off the front, off the off the beginning. Half baked plan? Not even half baked. Like nobody thought this through. Oh no, that's for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah, you right. We just said somebody just said, you know what? We're gonna do this. Do you think there is a oh, there is an underlying reason that we don't know as to why all of this is with the immigrants are, is happening? You need the conspiracy theories on here. Me, I don't be thinking. I don't know. Because everything has a everything. For something th- this massive to happen, there has to be something. Yeah, I know it's a, it's a bigger play. It's a way bigger play. And that's. But and it's uh, in my if I put on my you know time for a koofy like you know Jerry ten, Dale ten say for a koofy <laughs> like Jerry Dale say is you know when they come over here and you know the senses and all that stuff I'm thinking about stuff like that and the numbers. You know they uh, classify as like white, right? Like when you not mark off your senses or when you're going, it don't be that they be marking off like Hispanic or anything like that. They mark off white. Mm. That was, that's one of my conspiracy theories. I, that's what I'm thinking. That's the first thing I went to was like something like that. That's one of my conspiracy theories. It's to, to garner votes. That's a fact, yeah. I think this is a, I don't want to say too much. Because, <laughs> man, you start figuring stuff out. You start saying too much. And then, you know, YouTube shadow bans us. YouTube starts, you know, cutting our videos and stuff. You know what I mean? So I don't want to say too much. But that's that's my theory. I think it's a matter of garnering votes for the Democratic Party. Mm-hmm. I think because under under a, under a Democratic presidency all of this is happening so now people are going to say well because of joe biden well because the united states was under joe biden mm-hmm. joe biden is under the democratic party the democratic party brought us here so we need to continue to align ourselves with them <laughs> conspiracy theory what do you think <laughs> hey man, we just we ain't even really got started. We got started. You gonna get us canceled already? <laughs> we ain't even got I just, off the ground. I mean, cause I I just think that's just how my brain works. That's just how my brain works. What? Let's think before we see what we saw. Mm-hmm. Let's think not even before we see. Let's think two, three, four, five, six steps down the line. This is how my brain works. Okay. So. What what sense does it make? It doesn't make any sense to just randomly just pick up, prospectively saying, pick this pile up, then just drop it off and nothing happens after that. To pick this, to have all these people come here and drop really, them in the city. Really, but really they come into mostly all democratic cities because they're like supposed to be sanctuary states, like safe states. Sanctuary cities. Yeah, sanctuary is yeah, sanctuary cities. Yeah, I think that's why they come in here and all that stuff, though, right? I don't know if that's why. Well, I mean, that's a why. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, because most know of them why. coming from like when they come across the border, Texas, Texas is dropping them off and bust holding them to all these cities that say, "Oh, since y'all talking about y'all sanctuary cities and y'all can come here, we're gonna drop them off there." Then. Jerry Day said, "We got seventy subs." <laughs> Every day said, "Yeah, I like that Tom Ford Koofy." <laughs> yeah, shadow, shadow band. Jerry, I don't know if you asking like what does it mean, but it basically YouTube whoever's notified to us or whenever we go live, YouTube won't show people that we're live or they won't notify people that we're live. Oh, that shadow banner. 
I don't know. I mean, I don't know if they did because you no, know, all the people that I watched that have gotten shadow banned that have a substantial, a huge growing hundred k plus. Yeah. They don't know that they're shadow banned. People tell them that they're shadow banned. Uh. By way of saying, you know, the notification didn't come through, whatever the case. Uh. But, and although temporary shelters have popped up in neighborhoods across the city, some residents don't support the moves. I am absolutely livid. Livid. Doris Lewis yelled at a, a tense community meeting in Hyde Park Wednesday. I was actually talking to somebody. And they were talking about they were talking about Hyde Park. Let me put this up. But yeah, they were talking about Hyde Park and how how the immigrants are affecting Hyde Park. Literally, like he they, he was talking about them. There was an old like building. I think it was a hotel or something, uh-huh. and it was shut down, like not being used, completely abandoned. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, the immigrants come, and now that, that that's a hotel for them. So it's housing for them now? It's housing for them now, yeah. In Hyde Park? In Hyde Park. That's what he told me, and that sounds like that aligns at least a little bit with this story. Uh, Lewis is one of many Hyde Park residents who spoke out against the idea of approximately 300 migrants set to move into the Lakeshore Hotel as nearly as next week. I don't know... From where they come, said Gail Baker, another Hyde Park resident. I don't know what the intentions are. I don't know the time frame. I don't know if this is temporary, if this is long term. See, do you think that that is a legitimate complaint, legitimate concern from a Hyde Park resident? Oh, hell yeah. Because if you don't, because, okay, that's the case. Why didn't you drop them off in Oak Park? I don't know. Why are they going to predominantly black communities and doing that? Why are they ain't dropping them off in Little Village? Oh, are you? Ooh. ooh. Why are they ain't drop them off wherever? Like, and I'm not saying this about segregation or anything like that, but why, but in particular, why drop them off in Hyde Park? Why is Hyde Park the one where y'all going to? Do y'all want to take over Hyde Park? Do y'all want to move majority? Because Hyde Park, I think, is a lot of black in it. I don't know. If I'm if I'm if I'm right or not, I know Jay every day know about it. Like little stuff around. It's 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 majority. It's high park Jay every day. It's uh, high park majority of black, bro. That's this is why we don't like having conversations when all three of us not here, man. Because I really don't know about this. I, mean, I would tell you I don't know about something. I'm not for sit up and just be. I don't know about. It. I don't know about. It. Right. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. And then even when you said Oak Park, I'm like, is shit. They could have put him at Humboldt Park. Why Hyde Park? Like, out of all the places, why did y'all put them in Hyde Park and why are y'all trying to take them to Hyde Park? What did Jeremy say? Yep. Yeah. So it is mostly black. So why Hyde Park? That's the that's the question. Why Hyde Park? Why not Oak Park? Why not Humble? Humble Park. Why not um Little Village? Shit, why not over there Harlem and 79th? Harlem and 80th. Why not over there? They got a lot of buildings over there. The house, then. Why yeah. not over there? Uh, that's, a, that's a good question, man. It's a lot of questions that need to be asked. And that's a valid question that that resident asks. That's a valid valid statement. According to the report from the Chicago Sun-Times, the city did not respond to requests for a comment about whether it would be for families or singles and when it would open and what the cost would be. Sound like legitimate concerns to me. For sure, do. To me, too. Because if you're just moving these people into this area, somebody has to pay for them. Mm-hmm. Jay Everyday said they're all throughout the city, to be honest. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. <clears throat> but that's why they say you need to be voting on the local levels because if your local aldermen and, and senators and all that stuff for that local thing, they can get that shit changed. They can get to go take them somewhere else if you don't want them there. Right. right. It's, it, and that's that's the thing. You know, the, the, the governing officials, the president, the people in the office are a reflection of the people that have voted for them. Yeah. 
So, so, and then it's like, it's not like you saying, oh, we don't want the Spanish over here, we don't want them over here, but I heard a lot of things like the crime and stuff has been going up over there, because a lot of them starting to, like, it was like taking advantage of them people, and it was like a lot of, you know, uh, grape and stuff over there and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And a lot of crime, a lot of sex. I mean, it's just a lot of uh, uh, a crime over there in the area. I've heard. I don't know how yeah. true it is. I've heard that on multiple occasions too, and it's and that's one of the biggest concerns to uh, with with people and with me in particular. One, who's paying for this? Which we already know the answer for that. That's a fact. We already know the answer for that. Two, what 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 are the chances of crime happening? Mm-hmm. Crime against the, the the people that already live there, the taxpaying people, the people mm -hmm. that are that that live that have been living in the city. I don't care if it's for a month of for for years. Mm -hmm. The people that you're moving in here are not paying for it. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm a, the biggest one to me is you got to front the bill for that shit when you didn't ask for it. That's the biggest one to me. And then when you need help or you need some type of government assistance, you can't get it, but I had to pay for this and I didn't ask for this shit. Jerry, they said 40% black. Well, okay, 40% black. Cultivate your roots left. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I don't know about that area. Like, he, he, Jerry, they introduced me to the area. Like, I would probably drive past the Hyde Park area, but I never... No, he swear by it. Jerry, they love it. Yeah, yeah. I, and, I, it, was, it was great, because we were walking up and down the street talking, and just looking at it was it was a, a a nice it was a nice area it was like a nice area to just chill to walk them down the street and talk and just en and enjoy the views know what I'm saying yep <laughs> I ain't saying nothing about them people <laughs> um the new shelter plans uh the new shelter plans come as the city received over 13,500 migrants in the past year from Texas and as 6,500 are spread amongst 15 currently operating shelters. 13,000 more people. Jesus Christ, man, that's a lot of people. You're just throwing out there. Around 1,500 are sleeping at police stations and airports waiting for the shelter space to open. If I was a police officer, bro, they already get enough flack from people. Yeah. Defund the police. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm do your do your job. Do your job. You know, and people want to smart mouth them and all that stuff. They already deal with enough. Mm -hmm. Just by being police officers. Mm -hmm. And now when they come to work, as what I've seen in the news, they have to climb over people that are sleeping over. I believe it's no I don't think it's like that, man. At least that's what the news, you know, I mean, I don't think any, anybody can make up, you know, yeah, everybody can put that together. That I don't think it's that bad. 13, but they, they, where are they sleeping at? They, they spread out says, everywhere, though, yeah. Everywhere it says crowded, yeah. I get you. So, I don't, that's what, that, that's what I'm imagining. If they say sleeping in police, police stations aren't that big in in a way that they can house people that way. I ain't put them in the cell. Oh, my goodness. So scrolling down, local leaders lobby, lobby for migrants to receive work permits faster. Oh, so, oh, so they wanted them to get work permits faster so they can start working? These people aren't U.S. citizens by any means. They got to do something out of here. True. To that degree, I have no argument. Yeah, so it's, it's better for them to... For us to get hurry up and like push them through to get work permits, then to sit there and we keep paying for them instead of they can start working and probably start making a livable wage and start getting their own apartments and all that stuff too. I have a theory that this is my conspiracy theory. Okay, I've, I've shared this before. I think it's a ploy to get cheap labor because you have American people, right? They're they're <clears throat> they're. Average, like the, the UAW, right? Mm -hmm. UAW wants to work less hours and get paid more money. Yes. Shit, if they get that, we need to go for that too. <laughs> they, they want less hours. And yeah. So instead of working 40, they, they, they can talk about 30, working 32. 60, 70, 80 hours, whatever. They want to work 32 and get paid for 40. And get a pay increase. All right, 
searching for a lot. You know, employees are always sticking with employees, but sometimes your ass sound crazy. I can't fuck with you on that one. Y'all on y'all on with that one. Right. It, they say shoot for the stars and land on the moon type of thing, right? Like I ain't, I ain't got nothing to do with shoot for the stars. That's goddamn it. He gonna look at you like, man, get the fuck out of my office. <laughs> I mean, they officially. I think the the strike officially started. Oh yeah, it's a lot of strike now too. So now we get these people. We bring all these people that aren't making anything. They're gonna probably start working at them factories. Then people gonna be looking at their ass crazy. That day, you 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 own to something like you you really own to something like like they bring them all here. People talking about they don't want to do these little dead end jobs, and they are going ahead and doing real quickly without no asking no questions or anything like that. Bro, <laughs> these factory jobs that that American people don't want to do. Yeah, they be yeah they be in there. I'm, I'm just trying not to say. The right. wrong yeah, thing, yeah, 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 yeah. For, cause you know I say some shit and I'd be like, I really didn't mean it like that, yeah. but I'm just trying to find the words for it. So that's why I'm just yeah, I get mm-hmm. you, I get you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's 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 the conundrum about the whole thing. That's uh, yeah. the conundrum about the whole thing. It's like American people are la- are trying to do less and get paid more when these people that are coming here are making nothing. So I think they'll take these jobs for half the pay. Mm-hmm. You don't want to work no more? Okay, cool. Don't work no more. We'll 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 suffer through training some people. We'll suffer through a little bit of loss and, and, and a few defective products or whatever it is. But that but I'll work I'll save I'll save half as much as what I'm with them than what I'm paying you. Yeah. That's true, because that's what happens to the trucking market too. All the immigrants come and get that and then they start undercutting and underbidding and that's not the standard, bro. That's not the standard here. Just because you want the work, you don't just undercut it under bid. You fucking up the market. You fucking up the game. No, I, I don't think so. How come you're not? You're fucking up the game because if if the bare minimum is a five thousand dollar load, why the fuck are you trying to come and do it for twenty five hundred? Like pennies on a dollar. No, that's not how this works. It's good for you if you the you the um what they call them. Views? What you mean, views, JVD? What the fuck they call them? But that, I think a, a, a business is gonna do whatever's gonna do whatever they they're looking for. Any a business is looking for any way to cut costs and save money, or yes. even repurpose money, right? So if let's just say person A already works at this company mm-hmm. and they're getting paid eighty thousand dollars a year. Mm-hmm. Person B comes and said, I'll do the same thing. You just got to pay me 65. And that's not how this shit should be. You cutting it's, off your motherfucking nose despite your face doing that shit. Like, I you don't like just, just... I like how you just... Because you are. But I, was, I don't think Because so. you're fucking up the whole... You dig. It's not just about you trying to get the job. You're fucking up the whole market and you're fucking up for the next person. Oh. So now, you did that, right? So what's to say if the next person will come on and say... You paying them sixty five? I do it for forty. Well, the ultimately the business itself is gonna be like, okay, th- that's where I'm coming from. That's where I'm coming from. The business is gonna try do whatever they can or go with whichever direction they can to save the most money. But nah, but that's just like, nah. But but what they what what's gonna happen though is instead of people people aren't going to the business saying that I'll do it let I'll do the same job for less. The business is going to the people. And saying we'll offer you less, but they don't know the difference. What you mean? So business? okay, I, I, that was mad confusing. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, person A already works at the uh, 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 automotive factory, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Person A says, "You know what? I want 32 hours and get paid for 40, and I want you to pay me, uh, and I want you to give me a wage increase." Mm-hmm. Person B comes and applies for the company without person A knowing, of course, mm-hmm. and says. Uh, the, the 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 company is already saying, okay, this is doing too much. We need to figure out how we can. Companies are 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 looking towards getting their most tenured employees that get the most benefits out of the door because that's costing the company too much money. So while this person is complaining, person A that already works there is complaining, say they they want all of these benefits. The company is saying. 
we need to figure out how we can get somebody in here, some people in here, and offer them less benefits. But that's where laws and stuff come in at. I don't know. Is that still confusing? I think I, I think I still confused it. I understood it, but I didn't understand it. I didn't understand it. I understand, like you, you're, 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 but that's like where everywhere I work at, like right. Say for instance, I'm a new upcoming dude. I've been with the company twelve years. Somebody else been with the company twenty years. They will rather cut that. They will try to find a way to get that person right. that's working for twenty years to retire or to leave with something because they're gonna bring me up because I'm making way more or less money than him. I'm not making as extravagant of, of less Extra money, man. but I'm, I'm I'm making less money than him, so right. I'm saving the company money. So I that's get what that. I'm I understand that. Yes, that's what I'm saying. So now that's like, different than what you were saying about. Somebody's coming in undercutting and talking about their bidding on the on the thing. Nah, that's different. I didn't I didn't mean to make it sound like I meant undercut. I'm okay. thinking about the business saying the business saying. Yeah, okay, that's what happens look, a lot of times. Person, this person been working here for twenty years, but we got these people here now that ain't making no money at all. Yeah, but that's why the gap shouldn't be that much. Like even though you're there with the company, you should be making more than people that's underneath you. But it shouldn't be that huge of a gap though, as well too. But also, you shouldn't be that close to a person too, because. <laughs> I knew where that was going. Yeah, no mind. But no, that's and that's I mean the company's gonna make the best decision for them. That's right? Fact, yeah. And most most likely without a without a single doubt in my mind, the company is looking for even if for the most tenured employees, they're looking for somebody that they can get in, do the same work and pay them less. Yeah. That's that's just how the game goes, yeah. And I think that's what's happening with my bad. I think that's what's happening. With but it shows own. too as well, because when you have somebody that's been with the company for twenty years rather than ten years, you think the person that's been there for twenty years just complaining about this stuff and don't really don't do nothing. But then when you get rid of that person, now the person for the ten years come in and they're doing trying to do the same thing that the person for twenty years come in. They weren't crossing them T's and dotting the I's. They weren't already having stuff set up for weeks in advance. So they always stay ahead of things. Now this person for the 12 years coming up like, oh, I got so much to do. And they, now they're slacking off on everything. Things not getting done. Things not getting ordered. Like the printer paper. People want to take that like lightly. The person, they always check on the, the 20-year person. Always checked on the printer paper. Made sure that shit was always stocked always. But then you got the person that came 20 years, don't know nothing about that. I mean, with, t with 12 years, came and don't know nothing about that. Mm -hmm. And now they're coming in like, it's just a stack of paper for the whole building. Not a pen on a paper on back order. Yeah. We don't got no paper for like damn near two, right. three weeks. I think you're absolutely right. And that's what the example that I was using earlier with okay. like they'll they'll take a person with less experience. Yeah. If it they'll they'll suffer through the the whims and the woes of certain things not Ooh. getting done. If it means saving thirty, forty thousand dollars a year per employee. But it, it fucks you long run though. Because your company don't run it smoothly and it's gently. Because you thinking that secretary really didn't do nothing or that person that was in there complaining and all that stuff that oh yeah wasn't really doing nothing, but he was keeps like kind of the heartbeat of the shit. Kept the shit rolling, like right. it should have been rolling. Like you know how, smoothly. You know how good it was until it's gone kind of thing. Yes, that's a fact. And then company suffers, and then that's when company stocks and stuff start plumbing in. It's not getting as much business as it was. The shit is late. A lot of shit is late now. It's not running as efficiently as it was before. I think you don't think that's always short lived, though. What you mean? Not really? Because you gotta that person that's the twelve years don't have as much invested in that twenty twenty. Because when you've been there for twenty years, I don't give a fuck what you're talking about. You like you evidently you like it that much, <laughs> right? <laughs> So you yeah. gotta make sure at the end of the day that this shit runs smooth still, because this still a reflection of you. Yeah, um, I, I I don't disagree. I think ultimately the 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 business decision uh -huh. would be for them to hire new people, especially mm -hmm. with the migrants, right? Mm -hmm. That not that are making anything. Because since they're not making anything, the company can offer them anything, mm -hmm. whatever they want, as long as it's as long as it's not something. Well, I mean, I guess as long as it's, if it's um if it's in contract and they sign it, then you're held to that contract. Mm -hmm. But again, if 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 you have an employee that's been there for twenty years and they make a hundred thousand dollars a year, and you got a new person that's not making nothing, you can offer them forty thousand to do the same job. 
But it's not going to be done as right correctly. Though. You can say that. But they're, save, they're saving one hundred and sixty thousand in but comparison. Then, so, but then, like you say, in the long run, it'll cost the company way more money. Because just because you cut that co- that saving that cost right now, much shit is that person going to fuck up. It's going to cost you way more money to fix all that shit that that person fucked up. Okay, I hear what you're saying. Okay. I hear what you're saying. I know that I've been in companies before, in previous jobs, where they have the 20-year person mm-hmm. teach the new person how to do their job. But they don't give them all the tricks and the tricks. <laughs> I'm saying this, I think it's efficient enough. No, it's I not, because I guarantee you, that person that knows that they're teaching them the same job they teach them, like, oh, y'all trying to get rid of me. So I'm going to teach them how to do it so you can pass y'all to the blind eye, but I'm not going to teach them everything I do and what I want to do. Yeah. I mean, either way, I think I think it's, it's a low risk, high reward. Their, their mindset is a low risk, high reward. Yes. Those those are my two theories about that, though. I think it's garner votes and cheap labor because let's say McDonald's, the, the small retail places, right? They want a fifteen dollars an hour, not thinking about the long term run. If if they if you get paid more, then the cost of whatever you want to buy is going to go up because mm-hmm. they have to. The companies have to push that the the cost off into the consumer, mm-hmm. right? Well, if they if if we get these people in here that aren't making any money at all, we can offer them twelve. Or you can go a step further. That's what AI coming for. I was getting into that next. That's what AI coming for. I was getting into that next. I was thinking about that with the UAW situation. That's it's it's it's, it's coming, and 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 that's the, the the risk you take when you do stuff like that. But also, me and Jay every day we had this conversation with Hoagie, right? With Stogie, <laughs> with Stogie. we had this conversation with Stogie, right? Because Jay every day he always bring up a valid point where he's like, if I go in somewhere. And it's ran by nothing by AI. I will walk back out. I'm not buying nothing there. Yeah. And that's I think that's how everybody should be. And I, I'm like that too. If I see everything is automated and machines, I'm helping put other people out of work and out of business. I mean, out of work, out of work. So why would I buy something there that's all strictly automated? And I think every human should know that. Like, why would you buy something there? Why would you support that? People don't have that thought process. I understand that, but they should. I mean, just in the fact that. They have fully automated registers in Walmart's now. Like you scan but, your but, stuff. But yeah, that's true. And that's, it is. But it's still humans there. I'm talking about strictly automated. Like the the McDonald's that are. Yes. Saying. Strictly automated. Ain't not a person in there. It's a manager back there that's looking at the computer, making sure everything that's one person. Mm-hmm. At least at Walmart there's still people walking around still helping other people helping people with stuff. Right. If a Walmart go fully automated where it's like one or two people in their store, I will stop shopping there. Mm. I, if, I think if, if there was a general consensus on that, that approach to buying stuff and, and by default supporting AI, yeah. then the, the climate would change. Yeah, but, but then again, too, with, with all this AI and y'all taking away jobs, who are going to buy the shit that... The AI is running. People ain't got no money to buy this shit. I hear you. And I agree. I, I don't disagree whatsoever. Because if people aren't making money, then how are... And that's why, that's why I think as much as AI is coming into play yeah. and a lot, in, in a lot of cases taking over jobs, yeah. I don't think it's sustainable for society. What, AI? Yeah. Like, if imagine every McDonald's in the U.S. being fully automated. Yeah, just imagine your garden or your landscaper, all the, all AI. Yeah, they just hop out the truck and just start cutting the grass and hop back in and keep going. Yeah, <laughs> right. yeah just imagine that. I don't think it's going to, I don't I don't think it's sustainable for society to have so much AI that it puts so many people out of work. Yeah, y'all ain't seen um, Terminator? We're going to be right here fighting AI? Or I, I AI? robot. It's gonna be way. It's gonna be like you ever seen Terminators? Yeah. Terminators? It's gonna be like that. Cause them gonna be the one, the army ones. They be shooting back at. Them. 
So, according to officials, Illinois and the city of Chicago has spent $350 million on the migrant crisis. The federal government provided $38 million in reimbursement. And, and that's the thing that's my, I mean, that's mind boggling and, dis, and disturbing. Like, you're fitting the cost for shit that I didn't ask for. Especially if you stay in, you know, Chicago and you stay in city limits. Like, that's your money. That's your taxpayer's money right there. It's fucked up. Speaking of AI. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. Yes. That's, that's taxpayers' money. And that's going to... Listen, you and I probably will never see eye to eye on the the um, tuition reimbursement, yeah. uh, student loan payment. That's what I mean. Okay. We'll never see. I would rather that money go to student loan payments oh, to than, do that? Than, than the way that it's going right now. And, the, and, that's the, and that's my whole point of why we go back and forth. All this shit right here, helping other people, helping people from other countries, all this war, all this money shipping to... So Ukraine, all that money for that shit. But regular everyday people who stay here, who are working hard, who just fell behind, sometimes people just get in fucked up situations. And you can't help them out with their student loans and shit like that, but you got money for this? Yeah. That's the only, that's my biggest point right there. Yeah, yeah. Like we got money for every fucking thing else, but you don't have money to help people that stay here, Americans. Right. Listen, you don't you don't have any arguments from me about that part, for real, for real. Because is there not already a homeless? I don't want maybe not a cri- crisis is not the yeah, word, so, yeah, it's but a homeless, it's a homeless, a homeless epidemic. Shit, with motherfucking um, veterans, there's so many veterans on these streets. Mm, yes, you're right. Um, ain't no forty-three billion dollars. Forty-three? No, that no, that's no, never. That, that's that, that's that, less. It's less. It than can't that. be that. It's like a half a trillion. It it's a, it's like a half a trillion. I'm not trying to hear that. DHPX in the chat. What's up, bro? Ham. It, it's a half a trillion, bro. It's a half a trillion. It's so, about five hundred mil, five hundred billion. It's not. That's not forty-three. So this no. is according. No. To, I'm just read this. This quick Google from CNN.com. The U.S. is actually has actually spent a bit more than forty three billion dollars on security aid for Ukraine since Russia's invasion in February of twenty twenty two. The figure pops up to more than forty four billion during the Biden administration and more than forty six billion since twenty fourteen. When I Russia that. first seized. I don't believe that. It's way more money than that, bro. Okay, this is. According to CFR.org, since the war began, the Biden administration and the U.S. Congress has have directed more than $75 billion in assistance to Ukraine, which includes humanitarian, financial, and military support, according to the Kiel Institute for the World Economy and German Research Institute. I don't believe that. You believe that? You believe it's only 43? I think it's like a half a T. I think it's 500 B, huh? Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's half or no. We in the T's, B. It ain't no, it ain't no, no. Nah. We passed the bees. We had six. So? We had six figure bees. Fuck them, them. 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 No, we had six. No, we had three digit bees, <laughs> not two digit bees. No, that's not. I don't believe that. I do not believe that. I do not listen, believe that. Listen, listen. Between the money dedicated to Ukraine, between the money that's constantly that's growing exponentially from the immigrants. For their student loans. Yeah. That's a fight. And that's my my biggest point. That's what we go back and forth all the time. You can help out well, everybody well, else. We'll, we'll got to get into it. I'm not getting into it. Okay. Because I wasn't going to argue with you no more. I'm not even <laughs> going back and forth with you no more. That's my biggest point. You can help everybody else out, but you don't want to help people that stay here that's going to pay taxes anyway. That you're going to go up on the taxes and they still got to pay them. Yeah. But you don't want to help them out to relieve some of this debt. Yeah, when it comes to aiding people that aren't American citizens versus aiding American citizens, 
aid the American citizens first. It's a fact. You take care of your own backyard before you go start taking care of everybody else. I cannot go out here where I got a family at home and just start passing out money and helping everybody else. And my family sitting there looking, ain't got no shoes on their feet, ain't no clothes, ain't no food in the house, the lights off, but I'm giving money to everybody else. What yeah. the fuck does that look like? Yeah. Giving money to other people, but you're borderline getting evicted. Yes, it's a fact. Ooh, sheesh. But another thing I was thinking about, which you already touched on, uh-huh. but... And this is the last thing I'll really say about it. With the UAW situation. Yeah. And these people going on strike. I would wager that these companies are thinking. One of the th- one of the things that they're negotiating amongst themselves mm-hmm. is how we can replace people with robots. I would wager that. Yeah, I like, think so. Like think we don't so. we don't need maybe we don't need two hundred employees. Maybe we need one hundred. Yeah, we can come down. 75. That I was thinking about, I was thinking 75, but I just said 100. 50 to 75. We can cut the cost of that. I think. Yeah, I, I don't. Sheesh, man. On another note. Mm-hmm. Switch gears. All right. <laughs> you know, I don't, you can tell I don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> You ever seen the Saw movies? Who? Saw. It never interests me, no. Really? No. I don't, I don't really fuck with scary movies like that. It's not scary. But it's in a scary movie category. category. It always comes out around October, around Halloween. I would I would say gory. Gory? What you mean? Gory, like gruesome. Oh, gruesome. Okay. I, I just used don't to, fuck with them. I used to think that. I used to think that about Saw. What? Don't fuck with it? Like that it was a scary movie. Oh. Uh, but it's really it's really if to some degrees on the lines of equalizer. What? Punishing bad people. So it's really it's really so basically people that do bad things to other people. Yeah. The guy comes and, and kidnaps them and puts them in some sort of torture situation. Okay. So where they have a chance to figure out how to get out and save themselves. Mm-hmm. But if they don't, then something crazy bad is going to happen to them. Like there okay. was there was somebody that <clears throat> got knocked out and then they woke up in a chair. Okay. And they had, he had a, it was a mask attached to his face. Mm-hmm. And he had to find a key to unlock the mask to make it fall off and he'll be fine. Mm-hmm. But when he got kidnapped, the guy that kidnapped him took out his eye and put the key behind his eye. Okay. So in order for him to take the mask out, he had to dig in his eye and get the key out to unlock the mask. Okay. If he didn't, the mask would close on his face, but there's like nails and stuff in it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which one do you say? No, it don't interest me at all. No? No. Not one bit. And guess what? They won't get none of my money like Fast and the Furious did. <laughs> <laughs> it, just, it is what it is. I don't know what to tell you. No. No, they won't get none of my money. Is it? I, it's, it's, it's a decent watch, man. It, is, it probably is, but it's just... And it's, so, there's a story behind it. It's like along the lines of Scream. Scream is a continuous story. Okay. But how many continuous stories, like you say? Like you always say, how many is too many, bro? Franchise has been going for... 10 episodes because it says Saw X so Saw X means 10 right am I wrong am I, am I math math is my, my numeral my numeral unos or numeral numbers is they math is they up there you up the bar yes X is 10 right yes it's 10 movies right yeah so how long ago this should have should have been over with Uh, you, 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 you ain't got okay, no smoke for them. You got no okay, smoke. Okay, okay, okay. I was just wondering. You no, know, motherfucker likes something. They let that shit keep going. But if I don't like nothing, they gonna give it all hell. They got all the smoke for it. I don't really have. I don't really have. An, it's it's been a minute since I even saw a saw movie that I recall. Uh huh. So I'm like, whatever. I'm, I'm slowly rewatching and catching up. Okay. But that was just a random question. Um, random thought. You thought I watched them shits, didn't you? you know? I, not necessarily, because I, mm-hmm. I've I've gotten an idea about how what I watch about the stuff that you watch. Yeah. Oh yeah. So 
This is uh, um, my last thing for today. All right, bet. Jerry Day, we will have a nice episode next week. So, speaking of AI. Okay. Have you heard about ChatGPT? Yes, I've heard of ChatGPT. What have you heard about it? I've heard that it can write scripts, write songs. It's just like you put a bunch of information on there and it can come and come with your thoughts and whatever like that. Like it can put, it can take all the episodes of our podcast, put it all up in Pat GPT and it can ask you the question and it'll give answers based on each of us from our thoughts and stuff, from all the other stuff. It'll tell us how we will probably think about that question. Mm -hmm. Am I wrong? Yeah, basically, yeah, you're, yeah. I'm wrong? Yeah, yeah. No, no, you're not wrong at all. <laughs> said, yeah, I'm wrong. I thought that's what it was. No, it's it's that and more is what I'm getting at. Yeah, I can write papers for you. Man, I watched it happen. You watched it write a paper? I watched it. Why the fuck this shit couldn't be out like 25, 30 years ago when we was kids? <laughs> what the fuck? Even when we were kids, it was it was to the generation before, they're saying the same thing. Like they said the same thing about our generation. Like they had to go Specifically to the library, and we kind of did it. too. We didn't get that shit to towards it. Like it was towards the end, a little bit towards. It. Like we were growing, we were like in high school when the internet really, really started taking off. Like the internet was not taking off when we was in high school like that. So early two thousand, the internet was really taking off like that. No, it wasn't really there yet. It was there, but it wasn't taking off, taking off like it is now. Not even like it is now. From. I remember being confused on and as and back in I don't know what grade it was, being confused on how to properly cite my website sources. But you're way younger than me too. You like you got about you four four to five younger than me. Well, I'm saying the generation before us, so our parents, right? Yeah. How they had to do a research paper. We was, in, we was using the sources and going to the library and reading our books and stuff, too. But it was easier for us than them, though. Yeah, it was. Yes, 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 it was. It That's was. what I'm getting at. Okay, okay, it was easy. Okay, easy, but I was just talking about the internet. That's what I was talking about. So, How everything was in the internet now. Like, you can go, you need to write a paper about something. You could just go Google that person's name and pull up all the articles you want to pull up about that person. We didn't right. have that. Right. You said that's a library, too. Right. Okay. So it was, it was a mixture for us, definitely. Yeah. Like, like, they would even say, I remember specifically, they would say, you get two book sources and one internet source. Oh, see, no, nah, it so was just, oh, we was all, it didn't even have that in, in amplification for us. It was just, go write this paper about this person. So I say that because I know that, oh, I, I, bro, I'm literally watching. I said, tell it to, tell it to write a three page paper about. The benefits of healthy fruit. Okay. But I'm telling you, bro, all of the the, the format, the all of the, the the format of the paper, how they said like put the 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 header of the paragraph that you're gonna write in bold letters, and then have some space in between, and then you know hit hit enter once and then tab over so it's not at the same. It's doing that at the very moment I'm watching it. Yeah. I, no. Yeah. Yeah. I've, uh, yeah. I've heard of it. It's scary. It's really, really scary. It's, it's 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 scary to the point of like it's going to be a lot of lies on the internet, and it's to the point where like Charlemagne say this all the time. You see how highs how how high stakes he is right now between countries and stuff. What if we got an alert saying Russia released a nuke on the internet or something like that or, or something like that? And the nuke could be here. And how how quick they say a nuke could be here? I don't know. I'm not is sure. it five minutes? How how fast? Is it, what is the fastest the, a nuke can be here? Go, but go ahead. Like they saying that, and our leaders have only minutes and seconds to decide if we're gonna send a nuke nuke back. Who would you say this? Um, let's, let's say China to U.S. No, Russia. Oh, Russia. Russia more than China. Thirty minutes. So. You feel me? So, we got 30 minutes to decide if that's real or not. And if we're going to send nukes back. It'll take a land-based missile about 30 minutes to fly between Russia and the United States. 
A submarine-based missile could strike in as little as 10 to 15 minutes after launch. So that that's 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 crazy. Yeah. If you got that on the internet, and like, what what if what if people heard that, and you got some that react too quickly without, let me take just a few seconds to see, is they really sent it? Can we really get the information instead of just sending it and hitting the button right back? There, I remember a story about that, right? That where, I would hope that there are precautions set in place to try to verify whether that is true or not, right? But I'm saying so, it's scary though. Yeah, no, I I, I agree. I agree because with technology these days, man, like one missile can affect a, a ginormous area. We can go ahead and wipe out humanity. Easily, right? I remember hearing the story about how a man, a single man stopped, stopped war from happening because he chose not he like it was it was a rumor going around that a missile, I think the US launched the missile missile. Mm-hmm. Or maybe vice versa. I have to find a story. But he that pressure, he was the one person. He was the one person to choose whether or not he retaliated. Retaliate. And what he said, no, I ain't gonna retaliate. He said don't. Because it was it was just a rumor. You got me fucked up. If I, I, I would try to do my best to do the research to see, try to take every precautions. But I'm not, we're not going to be the only ones that's dead around this motherfucker. Everybody, <laughs> we, you got me fucked up. No, everybody has to go. Oh, here it is. Stanislav Petrov. Stanislav Petrov. He's a... Uh, oh, so that's true. It's a true story. Yeah. Uh, was a lieutenant colonel of the Soviet Air Defense Forces who became known as the man who saved the world from nuclear war for his role in 1983 nuclear false alarm incident. But well, oh he and he oh so oh and then that was back in the day so he had to think about that shit right then and there like I'm not gonna do it because I don't think it happened and he didn't have like this was literally forty years ago. Think about technology forty years ago. They didn't really have no phones like that, right? So that's what I mean when so I he say he just took an educated guess almost like this. So like, imagine if he just hit the button back. On September 26, 1983, just three weeks after the Soviet military had shot down Korean Airlines in Flight 007. And they shot down commercial airlines? That's they bogus. Lieutenant Colonel Petrov was the duty officer at the command center for the OKO, OKO Nuclear Early Warning System, when the system reported that five missiles had been launched from the United States. Oof. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Petrov judged the reports to be false alarm and his decision is credited with having prevented an erroneous retaliatory nuclear attack on the United States and its NATO allies that could have resulted in large scale nuclear war. We might not be here. We might not be here. If he had probably did that, we probably wouldn't be here. Because you know, them nuclear bombs probably back then in the day was probably so gruesome. It's, I'm, 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 one, I'm 100% sure that it's worse now. I think it's more controlled now. It's more, it's right. I think, okay, meeting halfway. I think it's controlled, but worse. And I think that's why no, nobody really wants to have nuclear war. That's why nobody has. Uh, okay, so what I'm saying is when I say by worse, I mean that now with so much technology, like they can pinpoint exactly where it's going to hit and how far it will go. Back then, I don't think they really knew how far it would go and how devastated it probably would have been. So say for instance, like now, it can probably hit like downtown Chicago and go as far as how many miles out. By, from the things of back then, it'll probably hit downtown Chicago and probably go from downtown Chicago to goddamn the world or some shit like that. It was so many miles, more miles out because it wasn't controlled. It wasn't controlled. The, the technology wasn't up to where they would be able to like pinpoint to, accuracy, to pinpoint, pinpoint the, the the speed and the path. And that's what I'm travel. saying. It was probably more devastated back then. I can see what you mean. 
I can see what you mean because we have more more options these days to. So we can probably go now small loop, medium loop, large loop. <laughs> what you mean? So you can probably have the small loop that is just probably further downtown. You got the medium loop that'll probably come fit well, 20, 25 miles outside of downtown. Then you got the large loop that'll probably go 100 miles outside of downtown. That's what I mean by more control. Yeah. The result of Petro's decision for humanity was that life as we know it went on unabated. The result of Petro's decision on his military career was quite different. His decision that brought the light brought to light problems in the Soviet early warning system and embarrassed his supporters. He was denied promotions. What? He was denied promotions, reassigned, and took early retirement. The story was not even known outside of the secretive world of the Soviet military until late 1990s. You know what that is, right? You know exactly what it is. Somebody above him wanted him to push the button because they wanted nuclear war. Allegedly. No, it ain't allegedly. That shit would happen. Bro, if he got demoted without saving other humanities and the shit was false, why wouldn't you promote him because he got good sense? I, I don't disagree. So that means somebody in their camp did that so he could do that and thought that he would push the button. They wanted nuclear war. Mm, I think I hear your theory. I hear your theory. But so it wasn't, it wasn't just that that was all, no that shit was like that shit go deeper way deeper that's just I don't know it probably is a story that I probably never wrote of but it's probably need to be a, a real detailed story about that or a little documentary or some or a docu series or something like that because that's way deeper than what we think because the Soviet Union wanted that nuclear bomb to go off and send that nuclear war. I have to put allegedly behind it, but go ahead. Yeah, allegedly, allegedly, but I'm I'm I'm. I have not seen our doctor, but I know just by He's reading that right there. Reading between the lines. Yeah. Yes. You don't get no promotions. You you forced into early retirement. Because and you save some shit. We see a lot of we see a lot of situations when a person does what is the the right thing to do. Yeah. And because the right thing to do wasn't conducive with the plan that was set in place. Yeah. You get blackballed. You gotta get up out of here, B. Because you weren't following. You weren't following what we should have been doing. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good theory. That's a good theory. But as far as as far as Jet, Jet, Chat GPT and technology, teachers know about it. That shit's scary, bro. And, and all Jet PT, Jet GPT. What is it? Chat GPT. Chat GPT or GPT Chat or the game banging Chat, whatever the Chat is. All you gonna do is make us lazier. Not doing the research, not doing the work. That's the thing. I think teachers know about it, so they'll they cite your sources. They did that with us last. All all they'll do that. Shit. They can make them a whole bunch. It's stuff. like it's it's like when you do math and have to show your work instead of just putting the answers on the paper. But okay, but they said cite your sources. So a teacher gonna go through every paper that she told somebody wrote. I mean, write. So she got say she got. Six classes a day. Six classes time. How many kids? Sixty kids. I mean, uh, twenty kids. kids. One hundred and twenty kids. Yeah. Right. So one hundred twenty kids. She's gonna read each of those papers and go to each of those sites on those papers. Nope. She's not doing that. Cause you gotta go put the site in yourself to make sure they didn't, you know, do what they did good and they got this from this site for real. Yeah. That's a part of what they. Uh, it's part of what I think. That's part of what they signed up for. Mm-hmm. Should at least try. That's that's crazy. I yeah. want to know more story about that story. Yeah, that, that's so. That's that's what's like knowing that Chat GPT is capable of that. It just makes you wonder how can it's it's getting to a point where how can we prove what's real and fake? That's true. Because it even had it's a smart technology, so it'll catch wave of how you talk and how you think and how you phrase things. Yeah. And it'll learn how to talk for talk in the way that you talk. That's what I'm yeah. And that's what I just said about it'll take our no key podcast, all the episodes that we didn't put up, period. Yeah. And it'll answer questions for us based on that and it'll probably be some type of accurate of how we'll think. Natasha said, there is software for teachers to verify original work 
but the software is flawed too. Nothing, nothing is perfect. Oh, okay, okay. That's a good one. I didn't, I didn't think of that. I didn't think about that either. That oh, so they sense. just put the paper in like the, the software system and then the reader go over it. Shit, that's Jack GPT. Check it out, Jack GPT. <laughs> Isn't it? It sounds like Chat GPT checking on Chat GPT. So Chat GPT like, hey, bro, keep your mouth closed. Hey, hey, I read it for you, chill. chill. Right. Before I tell on you. <laughs> That's crazy. Hey, they say computer like it was a smart computer that was talking to itself. Ooh, that that shit scared me. Yeah. No, they no, they say it was two computers, and oh, they yeah, were going at the same time, and they started talking to each other. Yeah. And they saw that shit, and they were like, oh no, we need to unplug this shit. This shit's crazy. Yeah. And they was talking to each other and understanding each other. You seen the Iron Man movies? It started talking, looking, going through our past. Like, nigga, y'all the reason why everything is so fucked up. We need to eliminate some of y'all. Yeah, 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 yeah. One last question. That's basically what it is. Yes, yeah, yeah, just from the time. <laughs> <laughs> Can vegetarians eat animal crackers? <laughs> hey. I was just talking to somebody else. That's a high question. And I'm not high, so I'm not answering that. That is a high question. That's what people who smoke weed ask each other. I don't smoke weed. I don't know. <laughs> so let's wrap this up, bro. So you're asking me some high ass shit. I don't smoke weed. I don't know. Come on, man. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> it's a high ass question, bro. <sighs> <laughs> And you know that's a high ass question too. In my line, that's a high ass question. Hey, you seen that? That man would do is like. No, man, I'm not fucking with you. Yeah, see, Come on, man, let's go, man. We already got. We already over time. Hey, man. <laughs> So it's, this is what I, a quick message I have just for parents, man. Oh, yeah, well, let me go. Oh, yeah, well, okay, cool. Cool. Right. Let me see. I yeah. forgot all about the mess, too. Yeah, man. Hold on, where's that? Uh, I think it was called, what I, what I put on? Oh! Um, um, I, I've been thinking about this, and it's like, sometimes you gotta refocus. Like, refocus everything. Mm-hmm. Like, re, re, what did I say? It was refocus. You got to refocus everything because, like, you'd be on a path for so long. You'd be doing things for so long, and you kind of veer away from your original goal, your original path, and you got to hone in, shut everything out, and refocus on what the ultimate goal was. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. everybody got to refocus. And don't be afraid to refocus. Don't be afraid to, like, kind of reset, get things back in order of how they used to be and how they was and how you used to like them. So it's nothing wrong with that. So... You know, I was just thinking about that, how I've been on my little journeys of whatever I be doing or whatnot, and I'm like, sometimes you just got to refocus. Sometimes you got to go back to, like, the bare bones roots of how you got this thing started, how, what got you on this path to this journey that you was on in the first place, and what was working in the first place. It's okay to go back to the bare bones and just refocus on what you was doing at first. That's cool. That's just my thing right there. I was thinking about it. Go check out Little Absolutes podcast with Will Hills. Bill Hill's a great dude, man. Yeah, all right. He's gonna say he got some jokes for my ass. <laughs> he gonna tell you ain't invited to the house again. <laughs> yeah. This has been another rendition of the No Key Podcast. Wear your crown, build your legacy, kings. I am your man, Spaces. I just realized that I didn't have my J Everyday costume. Hey, boy, he gonna hit your ass. Jerry- keep on. He keep on. What do you say? Uh, Natasha just said, talking like a newly married man. <laughs> You're refocusing. No, it's cause it's like a, a story for another day. It's just cause nothing. I'm your man, Spaces. <laughs> Jay every day couldn't be here today. Miss you, man. Can't wait to talk to you next week. It's a fact, man. I go by your boy.